here's some good news. Nearly every nation has agreed that we need to act quickly to fight climate change. That's a huge step. But the real challenge for the US is figuring out how to drastically cut our carbon emissions over the next few decades. Some climate advocates think we should focus entirely on converting to renewables, like wind and solar. Seems like an attractive idea, right? But is it feasible? Let's take a closer look. In the US, the power sector is our largest source of greenhouse gas pollution, so we know we'll have to make big cuts there, dropping at least 80% by 2050 and down to zero pretty soon after that. Fortunately, two important sources of zero carbon electricity, wind and solar, have been growing really fast, jumping a thousand percent in just 10 years. The bad news is that's not nearly fast enough. In 2014, wind and solar still only made up less than 5% of our electricity mix. Some of the rest came from other zero carbon sources like nuclear and hydropower, but the majority came from fossil fuels like coal and natural gas, which emit a lot of CO2. To decarbonize with just renewables, wind and solar will need to replace all of this fossil fuel generation. As if that wasn't hard enough, most of our nuclear power plants are due to retire by 2040, so wind and solar would need to replace that zero carbon power too. That's an enormous responsibility to place entirely on wind and solar, especially given some of the major challenges these technologies face. First, it takes a lot of wind and solar to replace energy dense sources like fossil fuels and nuclear. A well-known study that proposes running the entire U.S. economy on renewables estimated that we need to build 484,000 wind turbines and a bunch of other stuff. In addition to the cost, we'd likely have to overcome major legal and political challenges to get all of these facilities built. Just to give you an idea, developers of the Cape Wind project struggled unsuccessfully for 14 years to build just 130 offshore turbines. Second, the most practical places to build wind and solar are windy and sunny places, and those tend to be far away from where people live, so we'd have to build transmission lines. A lot of them. According to one study, we would have to double the length of the transmission lines we have now just to get half of our power from wind and solar. But building new transmission is really hard, especially when it comes to siting and permitting power lines through multiple states. It takes a lot of time, money, and public cooperation. And it brings up the really sticky question of who pays for it. Most importantly, wind and solar only work when the wind blows or the sun shines. That means to ensure that Americans always have power when and where it's needed, we need a huge expansion of infrastructure and technologies to balance supply and demand. We would have to build a lot of extra wind and solar and backup energy sources like natural gas to kick in when it's dark or still. We'd also need a lot of battery storage to help balance things out by charging up when it's sunny or windy and discharging when it's not. Managing the demand of some consumers can make it easier to balance supply and demand too, but these fixes cost a lot and it's not yet clear that they can get the whole job done. Wind and solar are important pieces of the climate puzzle. Despite their challenges, we know we can get them to at least 30% of our power mix, and we should work really hard to go even further. But don't forget that meeting our climate goal requires us to eventually get to 100%. And the challenges we've just talked about get harder and harder as we add more variable wind and solar to the grid. To meet our goal in time to make a difference, we must have other solutions ready to fill the gap. Technologies like advanced nuclear energy and carbon capture and storage, which produce lots of low or zero carbon electricity, rain or shine, can help. So let's play it smart and develop a mix of low carbon solutions because we won't get a second chance to stop climate change. Visit thirdway.org to learn more about the technologies we'll need to get the job done.